So some, summer is a really hard time around here to sit down and read because it's actually warm. I'm in a relatively cold place most of the year and we get like two months of warm weather. So when it happens, it's like, gotta get outside. I get busy in my shop. I have a hard time uh, making videos mainly because I'm just doing too many projects at once. But uh, kind of got into a slog with uh, who to read next, and I decided I needed a palate cleanser. And this book fell into my lap a couple of weeks ago. I actually presented it, I think, on the last book haul video. But I had no idea of its existence. I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know anything about the author. And then I sat down with it one day and started reading, and wow. <laughs> So this is Samurai Cat Goes to Hell. Uh, it's written by a fellow named Mark E. Rogers. This book is pure satire. And I don't even think you could call it tongue-in-cheek because the tongue is hanging completely out of the mouth. And there's a sign pointing to it saying tongue. This book is apparently part of a series that I was completely unaware of. Um, there's three or four other Samurai Cat books and they all take the same modus. This is actually the last one in the series. Uh, having read this one, I don't think it matters even a little bit that I had not read the others. There are uh, instances from the other books that are referenced in this, but uh, everything is spoon-fed to you in a way that it, it really doesn't matter. And um, when I say spoon-fed, I, I mean that in the most delightful way possible. I mean, this is this is the best ice cream that you can imagine. This book has um, has a lot going for it. Uh, right off the bat, the uh, the pun per page ratio is through the roof. Uh, I don't know that I've ever encountered a book with as many puns as this one. And these aren't. I mean, some of these are just you know your standard dad joke puns, and that's great. Some of these are the most well crafted puns that um, I have ever encountered. And anyone who knows me and has known me long enough knows that there's this one particular joke that I really relish in taking 45 or 50 minutes to tell. And the end of it is um, a very simple pun. And this book lives up to that kind of tradition, that sort of trolley humor uh, where you build a pun over several pages and you maybe half deliver it a couple of times along the way until you get to the very end and you just sink the knife deep and you go, ha, 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 I've carried you across multiple pages and I've brought you to this point. Enjoy this, you know? So it's, uh, it's great. We've got um, just to just give you a wild smattering, you know, we've got, um, uh, we've got Mongol warriors, um, and associated puns. Uh, there are Nazi Tyrannosaurus Rexes. And most of the book takes place in hell specifically, and it's a parody of Dante's Inferno. Uh, I believe that each of the books along the way uh, is a specific parody of either a movie or another book. Um, there are parodies within parodies in this book. Um, the uh, entrance to heaven at the afterlife uh, where you would meet St. Peter's and determine whether or not you're going to heaven or hell. It's actually a bait shop, which just for me, it makes a ton of sense. Let's see. The devil's name is Timmy and the theme song to hell was written by the devil himself. And it is of course, jingle bells. So uh, I, I really don't know what else I can say about this. In, in order to not spoil it for anyone, but I, I don't think that, uh, I don't think that I have audibly laughed at a book on every single page, maybe since I read Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy when I was 14. I mean, I've read some funny books here and there, but um, this book is a master class on the kind of control and power and humor that, that you can exhibit in, uh, in a piece of literature. Mark Rogers most definitely had the realization that he is all powerful 
in the worlds that he writes. And it's a very liberating idea once you let that settle into your bones as a writer, that you can literally do whatever you want. There are no rules. In terms of there being no rules, there's there's one element that I really enjoyed, and that was that um, there, the characters uh, in the book that are historical are not uh, temporally linked uh, in any sort of way with rational time. And so, you know, what you end up with is, um, you know, Mongol hordes, uh, led by Genghis Khan who have access to nuclear weapons and, uh, you know, uh, large pits just full of never ending rounds of ammunition, uh, or the fact that, um, you know, Hitler and uh, JFK and Ronald Reagan can all exist at the same time and in, within the same story. And, uh, you know, you question it if you want, but there's just really no need to. It all, it all just, if, of course, of course. This is a book that doesn't have a fourth wall. The narrator is implicated in this book throughout it. And um, there's actually uh, active antagonism between the main characters of the book and the narrator. And it's done in this very seamless way. I could see people attempting to write something like this and attempting, trying to be this creative and funny and really losing it in the mechanics, but it, the mechanics are something that Rogers is masterful at. Unfortunately, um, I did, I, of course I didn't know anything about Mark Rogers. I didn't know anything about these books, gave it all to Google when I was finished with this one and it, you know, peeled back the curtain on a lot of it. Um, Rogers himself died at a fairly young age. He wrote these books in the nineties. Um, and I think he died in 2013 ish. I think he was 54 and, uh, he had a, a prolonged heart condition of some sort he was out hiking with his family and, and, and died. And it's, it's really sad because there's so much potential. And I, I have this, this gut feeling that for the time that this was written in it, if you think about it in with your nineties glasses on, um, it would have been funny, but it would have been easily dismissed. And I think that that's the case because Mark was pressing enough when he wrote this book. And I assume the other books in the series to write them in such a way that they would make a phenomenal movie. And, um, I could see this as, um, uh, especially in our modern CGI movie world, this would make an incredible, uh, series of movies. It, it's also written like a video game in a lot of ways. It's, it's, it, it seems like he was channeling the idea that this could be serialized as a video game. And there are specific fight scenes throughout the book with, uh, demons and, uh, the devil himself and, and, and the characters in the middle that you could absolutely see this just translating seamlessly into, a, into video gameplay, um, which is, it's really funny. So I'll just say a couple of things. The, the main character is a fellow named Tomokato. And um, as I understand it, he has been attempting to avenge the death of his master throughout the entire series. Um, he has a, an apprentice, a kitten named Shiro. Uh, Shiro killed Hitler. Um, Shiro is a very, very cool little kitten. Uh, he's uh, a weapons expert and... Uh, Unfortunately, the sort of the gray area that landed him in hell was that he had sold nuclear weapons to a terrorist organization. So it's tough. Um, th there's baggage with these characters, but it's just delicious baggage. <laughs> the other really fantastic thing about this book is that Rogers was apparently a very talented illustrator. And uh, so throughout the book, you've got these really fantastic illustrations uh, of different scenes and, uh, they're pretty consistent every few pages or so, uh, you get a nice illustration of what's going on. You know, there's, there's nothing deep about this book, but it's one of those books that if you're really down in the dumps, 
and um, you know, you've got a sort of Damocles over your head and you're thinking, Oh man, this is, I've read too many climate articles and <laughs> things are pretty dark and Houston ISD is getting rid of their libraries to put in detention centers. Um, yeah, you got to go for something like this. It's a uh, bread and circus in the best way. So uh, I'll leave it there. I, yeah, go read, go read these books. We all need to read these books right now. I think there needs to be a popular resurgence in this series. It's time. It's time for this series.